If you've been following my vlog episodes, you may have seen the episodes where I 3D printed a topographical map of my property. One of my great hobbies is doing work around my house, learning new skills, destroying things, rebuilding them, and basically playing adult Legos with power equipment. One of my recent projects was having a well installed and putting in a full irrigation system for about one and a half acres of grass so I might finally have one of those lawns that fancy people have. While doing this, I was using map shots in Canva to overlay where the sprinklers were gonna go and trying to develop approximate measurements for where to put things. I like to refer to my modus operandi on doing basically anything as an 80-20, that meaning I plan out about 80% of it and then just kinda wing it for the last 20%. I figure there'll be lots of adjustments along the way and it'd be sort of doing double work to plan it out all the way through and so that's just how I do it. Doing a big project like this, it's kind of hard to visualize visualize the overhead view. So I employed my drone to take some shots from up above and better help me build the concept in my mind, but it still leaves a lot to be desired. So I was born in the crucible of RTS gaming, that top-down God's eye view of games. Uh, it will always have a special place in my heart. Hell, I still play Ultima online. So I like the idea of having a model of my property, my house, so when I go to destroy things and rebuild them or play adult Legos, I can have a model to kind of look down on things and help me sort of conceptualize and be inspired as to what to do. So my aim is to print as close to scale as possible a 3D model of my property, my house, my structures, and everything so I can use it in the future as a tool for plotting out the various projects that I get into. And as I add new features or make changes, I can just update the model and print a new version of it. For this project, I approached it in a few different ways, each with its strengths and weaknesses. And if you're very familiar with any of these, please comment below and let me know where I came up short and where I didn't go far enough on the certain sort of ways that I did it. Let me know if I can get a better result uh, going sort of a different direction. This is my property, it's a triangle. It has a gentle grade gradually throughout, so I needed to count for that. The first method I employed was polycam. Using their LiDAR scanning tool, I literally walked and scanned what I call the front yard. Polycam's result was actually pretty good. Viewing it from this flat plane, you can see it picked up on the grade and the drops. My issue here is that it's actually being able to print the model since it's basically tissue paper thin mesh sort of floating around in space. The next was photogrammetry with polycram. Now photogrammetry just uses a whole bunch of pictures and then meshes them together and then figures it out. For this I used drone video. I sent up the drone flying around trying to take shots and it was able to spit out something that was kind of workable. Other versions were not workable at all. I think the photogrammetry is much better utilized for an interior space like if you're scanning your house or small objects objects that you want to scan and print, not so much for giant open areas. I think it just doesn't have a reference point to go off of, especially for like the large expanses. So I'm going to go on to something else. So the more I thought about it, the more I actually saw the strengths and actually just hand designing it from the ground up. Since I plan to use this as a tool moving forward, it probably makes sense that I hand design it from the ground up so I know where each little nook and cranny is. Plus in the future, I hope to maybe develop a subterranean view of this, like a model that goes on top of it, showing all the buried utilities, all the stuff that I've buried. I think having it more standardized yet scaled might be beneficial in the future. Just leave it a little more voxely, boxy sort of uh, a way. So that way in the future, when I make those changes, I can go back through and it's not a lot of fine tuning. One obstacle I always run into during the tedious task of design is staying focused on the task. I'm more of a physical labor kind of guy. What, when I have to sit down at a computer and do these kind of things, my mind gets a little wobbly. So over the past couple weeks, I've been reaching for Magic Mind. Magic Mind's a mental performance shot. It's not a quick fix, it's not a coffee replacement. It kind of builds over time, and I've found that to be the case. They reached out and asked if I wanted to take a look at it. I'm like, sure, I'll take a look at it. So in addition to my morning coffee, I've been having one of these and it certainly helped me stay focused, clear, concise, sleep's improved, and it's generally pretty good. All the ingredients are third-party tested, doctor validated, all natural, all the information's on their website. Lots of nootropics, which I know a lot of people are into biohacking. This is also sold at Erewhon, so you know it's good. So if you want to give Magic Mind a shot, just head over to the link in the description below over to magicmind.com slash technicalstinkers50. You can get 20% off your Magic Mind subscription, or you can just buy some piecemeal. Once again, magicmind.com slash technicalstinkers50 for your Magic Mind. In the past, I've printed my general area using publicly available and free local GIS data. The problem with these is that they don't go down far enough. They're not very precise. They're really more so meant to print large geographic areas, entire cities, entire mountain ranges, things like that. So while not ultra, ultra precise down to the inch, I went to my local GIS and took a look at my property through there, looking at the topographic lines and then quite manually tracing it out 
in Canva to try to follow the contours of the lines. Now this map has an elevation marker every two feet in elevation change, so I split the difference, and for every one foot, I made the model drop one millimeter each layer. After printing, these lines are just a little too boxy and harsh, so I went back into Tinkercad and sent the model into Fusion to add a fillet to each of these to smooth everything out and it came out much better. And so I think we're ready for the life-size version over here on the Orange Storm Giga. I don't plan on this being the final model, but it will serve as encouragement and give me sort of some direction as to go referring back to that 80-20 thing earlier. I kind of want to see if I'm going to run into any problems having a model this large. I'm also going to put in some Boolean, some negatives as to where my property, my structures are and my driveway. That way I can take a look at it and see if I need to adjust anything. And so I've got it here. I had to actually add this section on because this is the right-of-way the uh, section of the property I guess that's uh, doesn't belong to me it belongs to the state it's you know just off the road so I had to add that in manually I took I'm not totally happy with these cutouts here they're a little boxy for me and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to print these without putting this into Tinkercad and making this into a bullion to print that all out so I'm thinking what I might do is go back to square one to try to contour this down a little bit better before I start adding my structures in. But this was actually very useful because I wouldn't have thought of that unless I had printed this out large. And I'm not sure how much extra work I would have gone in and done had I not done this. Another benefit too is that the longest edge here of the property is 692 feet. And the Orange Storm Giga prints 800 by 800. So I can quite, I can make this one millimeter to one foot as the actual scaling just to keep everything clean and concise and Tinkercad's you know default <laughs> default unit is one millimeter so that'll be super useful moving forward. So given that you're watching 3D print related content stands to reason that you like building stuff. So I'm curious if you're a touch grass type of person do you find that a model like this would be particularly useful in your application? Let me know how you would use it or if you see some benefit in offering models like this for potential sale. Maybe if you're uh, someone that knows a real they might have some interest in buying a model like this for a property they're trying to sell or just a homeowner that wants to have a little model of their own house. Either way, let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.